Salam here watching the international daily roundup by People's Dispatch, our selection of some of the top stories from around the world. Let's first take a look at today's headlines. Israeli forces kill a Palestinian teen near Jenin. Missing Afghan women activists released from prison. Tunisians protest president's control of the judiciary. And in Seattle, construction workers strike for a fair contract. Israeli forces have killed a 17-year-old Palestinian boy in the occupied West Bank on Feb 13th. Mohammed Abu Salah was shot during a raid in the Silat al-Harithya village late on Sunday. Occupation forces arrived in the area to demolish the house of a Palestinian man, Mahmoud Jaradat. He was charged and imprisoned in relation to a shooting near the illegal Homesh outpost in December. Deploying an illegal collective punishment tactic, Israel declared that the homes of the men named in the attack would be destroyed. Following reports of the raid, hundreds of Palestinians in the area began protesting. The health ministry reported that dozens of people were injured from live ammunition as well as rubber-coated bullets fired by the occupation forces. The Red Crescent also said that its ambulances were prohibited from entering the village. Occupation forces also attacked Palestinians in Sheikh Jarrah in the occupied East Jerusalem on Sunday. Unrest grew after far-right Zionist legislator Itamar ben Gvir set up a tent on the Salem family's land. Dozens of Israeli settlers also stormed the neighborhood early on Sunday and attacked residents. Palestinian protesters gathered around the Salem family home to remove Gvir's tents. Occupation forces then proceeded to deploy rubber-coated bullets, tear gas and stun grenades. At least 31 people were injured and 13 arrested. The Salem family is among several Palestinians in Sheikh Jarrah at imminent risk of forced expulsion and displacement. Four women activists in Afghanistan who were detained by the Taliban have now been released. They were reported missing after taking part in a protest rally last month. Tamanna Zaryabi Paryani and Parwana Ibrahim Khail went missing on January the 19th. Footage shared on social media showed Paryani asking for help, saying that the Taliban had arrived at her home in Parwan. Zahra Mohammadi and Mursal Ayar were disappeared just two weeks after. The Taliban, the Taliban consistently denied reports that the activists had been detained. The UN Af assistance mission in Afghanistan confirmed that on Feb 13th, the women and their relatives had been released. However, Tolo News had reported the arrest of two other activists, Mardina Darwazi and Marjan, by the Taliban on Feb 12th. Darwazi's two children were reportedly also detained and all four have been taken to an unknown location. Afghan women have reportedly held protests to demand their right to education and to work. Such gatherings have been force, forcibly di dispersed as the Taliban has banned all unsanctioned rallies. Girls have been largely excluded from education as most senior secondary schools, most secondary schools for that matter, in the country remain shut. Women have been unable to return to their jobs in several government sectors and cannot travel outside their towns and cities without a male relative. Our next story is from Tunisia, where hundreds of people have held a protest in the capital on Feb 13th. The unrest was in response to a decree issued by President Kais Saeed, granting him effective control over the country's judiciary. Decree number 11 establishes a temporary Supreme Judicial Council, or CSM, with no fixed term. Tunisia's actual Supreme Judicial Council was tasked with ensuring judicial independence and the appointment, promotion and transfer of judges. The president announced the dissolution of the body last week. While the official council was elected by legal professionals, a part of the new council will be appointed by the president directly. Said can object to the nomination or promotion of judges, after which the council must reconsider its decision. Said can also request the dismiss dismissal sorry, of judges for misconduct or failure to perform professional duties. The president will also be authorized to propose judicial reforms. Judges have also been banned from going on strike or organizing any collective action, which could disrupt the normal functioning of a court. The Union of Administrative Judges has denounced the decree as a flagrant violation of the separation of powers. And our final story is from Seattle in the United States, where a major work stoppage has shut down a $23 billion construction industry. Organized by Teamsters Local 174, 330 concrete mixer drivers and workers have been on strike for almost three months. The action began on November the 19th with 34 truck drivers at the Gary Merlino Construction Company. By December the 3rd, an industry-wide strike had been declared, affecting six major concrete companies in the Seattle area. Workers have been citing unfair labor practices, accusing employees of refusing to bargain in good faith. 
The strike was approved unanimously as the workers' contracts expired on July 31, 2021. Teamsters has said that the companies are proposing contracts which are as much as 25% lower than what's been offered to other workers in the industry. On the 10th of Feb, the union's bargaining committee waited outside the Gary Merlino company for over three hours to, to negotiate a new contract. Taking inflation and rising living costs into account, workers will actually see a decline in compensation over three years. Teamsters has also said that employers have refused to fund health care for retired workers. As reported by the South Seattle Emerald, many construction workers are forced to retire before they qualify for Medicare. They work up to 60 hours a week and are at high risk of both illness as well as injury. The employer's refusal to offer a fair contract has led to the slowing down of major projects and layoffs of hundreds of construction workers. That's all we have on today's episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more on such stories, visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and do give us a follow on all the regular social media platforms for updates on all the work we do. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.